don't even know what I'm doing. What's up guys, welcome to a super dark, super rushed and high probability of failure episode. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to do three things at once and y'all know how that goes. So what are we doing? We are trying to photograph Leonard with zero preparation and zero of the right uh, equipment. And I can't see anything. Oh, there. I'm like, where the heck is... Okay, so what do we got? I've got the R6 with my 70 to 200 F4. So what's going on with Leonard? Leonard is over there. He is a comet, and um, he's very dim. He's not like the last comet I saw. If you, if you guys saw, I have three episodes on shooting uh, Comet Neowise. That was, what was that, last year? And I got some pretty cool shots out of that. That was a way bigger, way brighter Comet. Leonard uh, is not so big and not so bright. Maybe that's why they named him Lenny. <laughs> oh, if you know that book reference. 10 points for you. <laughs> Camera lady definitely knows that book reference. Which way did he go, George? Okay, so what are we gonna do here? What I'm I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tr attempt to shoot this without, I didn't have time to set up my uh, star tracker or telescope or anything for piggybacking. Um, so I'm gonna shoot this with just a tripod and a camera. And I'm gonna attempt to walk you through what I'm doing, I'm gonna go for a couple of different shots. So we have Venus right over the Borough Mountains, which is just uh, uh, this three peaks right here that looks really cool. And um, Comet Leonard is underneath Venus about somewhere, ab maybe about, s I would say it's about one hand under Venus. I can't see it though. We can't see it with our naked eyes. So that's that's uh, problem number one, is um, we can't see it. I can't see Venus. So the thing is, if you want to do this, you, you want a fast lens, but it's actually kind of bright because the big daytime flashlight just went down over there and then we're looking southwest and that's where the daytime flashlight went down. Uh, so we're having issues there with it being really bright but just dark enough to screw me over. So Venus is getting really bright. And I'm gonna go with 72, this is the RF 7200 F4, <clears throat> F4, 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 say it again. My voice is being weird. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna try to get a couple of tight shots and there is somebody else out here, holy cow. We are in the middle of nowhere right now and there is, someone else driving on this random dirt road. They'll be gone in a second. Anyway, so 7200 F4, um, what that's gonna allow me to do is, I'm gonna take a few shots and stack. I'm not gonna do a whole lot, but I am going to do a few and see if that helps. It's gonna take some effort to bring out any detail in Leonard. Um, it's gonna be tricky. But I also want to shoot some wide shots. So if nothing else, what I want to get is like a cool astro shot of we have like an alignment of the planets right now. So we have to the southwest, we have Venus and then we have Saturn and then we have Jupiter and they're kind of Jupiter is way up there. But I think I do. I have my RF 16. Uh, my RF 16 millimeter, which I did a video on how that does for Astro, if you want to check that out. I have my RP with my 16 to 35 F4 time lapsing over there. And I'm going to try to do, I have my 85 F2. So I'm going to try to mix it up and do some wide shots and at least get something cool uh, from something. I don't know. I want, I want something tonight. But you guys might just be watching me fail. So. What are we gonna do? We only have, the other, the other problem is the comet is setting at 6.30, it is 5.46. So I don't have much time. So I'm gonna start exposing in the area that I want and just seeing 
uh, what I can see. So I'm going to start with putting this to infinity. And I'm going to do that by using Venus because Venus is super bright right now. And I'm going to focus on it. All right. So here's what we're looking at on the back of the screen. We have uh, the Burrow Mountains that I was telling you about, which look kind of tiny from this distance. Uh, we have hopefully some clouds going away. This dot in the upper top third center is Venus. So if we drop a little bit below, so if we drop a little bit below Venus, that's where uh, Leonard is going to be, but Leonard is dropping quicker than Venus. So it's dropping quicker than we're rotating because it's moving much faster than us. So um, this is the composition that I'm going to start with, and this is at 70 millimeters. So let me switch back into something. I don't know what I'm changing. Okay, we're switching back into manual mode. I am at, I don't need to be at F16. I'm gonna drop this down to F8. Actually, I'm gonna just go ahead and go wide open because the longer focal length that you have, uh, the shorter shutter speed you're gonna get away with. So that's why you want a faster aperture. So I'm gonna, I, I don't want movement, so I'm going to try starting it. I'm a fifth of a second. I'm just going to bring my... If we bring up the exposure too much, we're going to blow everything out. So now I'm at ISO 1600 at one-sixth of a second. And I am a little bit apprehensive that I'm going to see anything. I'm going to have to darken... I'm gonna to have to darken the sky up. It is way too bright. That might be it right there. It's 554 now, and I can't even find it in this. I know that I captured it, and I know where it should be, uh, but with my exposure as it is now, I can't even see it. I mean, the composition looks nice, except there's nothing there. <laughs> it's completely nothing there. I'm really hoping I'm really hoping that in the next few minutes, uh, just counting on a little bit more darkness, we have darkness across the rest of the sky. We also have, that's the other problem, we also have the giant nighttime flashlight is out, uh, and it's a full moon tomorrow, so it's like super full right now, and uh, it's just like lighting things up. On the upside, that time lapse is probably going to look pretty nice. So this map right here, the sky map, last time I updated it. Okay, so now we're, we're seeing, so you guys see Venus, you see Pluto underneath it. That's interesting. So somewhere above Sagittarius is the comet. And last time when I was shooting uh, Neowise, this map updated to where that we could see the comet. It had it on there. I don't know if it's gonna do that now. I'm trying to see if I can select the thingy for it to show up. Either way, it's not showing it, but we can see, if we zoom out again, we can see the line of these planets. We have Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter. So I may just try to get a nice shot of that. So it, when you do find the comet, it is going to look like a fuzzy star. <laughs> and that might be all that you see initially. And it's gonna have a little tail. I don't, the tail isn't gonna look anything like, uh, like the other one, like Neowise did. All right, so we're gonna change gears for a second because I still can't see anything. And I do want to get, while there's a little bit of light from blue hour. I want to get the remaining bit of the color there and then I want to get a wide shot with the three planets with Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter. And to do that, 
sorry. To do that, I'm going to use my 16 millimeter, the RF 16 2.8. Wow, I did that really good for not being able to see. You know what the one thing I hate about the new RF lenses? The cap, the rear caps, you have to align with the red thingy. Like, oh, it's frustrating. It is all the frustratings. I also lost my lens cap. Okay, so you can see here on the back of the screen, we've got Venus, you can't see Saturn, and then there's Jupiter at 16 millimeters. So that's what we're looking at. So I'm gonna try to frame this up. So the beauty of situations like this, and we do have a bit of moonlight, is that I can stop down my lens, my aperture, and I don't have to shoot wide open, which for this lens, trust me when I say that, really helps. So that's going to help with the coma and the chromatic aberration, which the chromatic aberration itself is not that bad, but it is going to help with the coma. Yeah, there is a <laughs> camera lady just pointed out there is a, uh, a pack of coyotes that are getting increasingly closer to us. <laughs> All right, well, I like that a lot. So technically, I have caught Comet Leonard. It's in that shot. <laughs> but that's so wide. Uh, that is a pretty nice looking shot though. It's still like looking straight to the Southwest though, that's still the really, the the brightest part of the sky, which is a bummer because that's where the comet is. And there's also just a sliver of clouds and they are right where I think the comet is going down. So I'm gonna have to start aiming for those clouds and seeing if I can shoot through or around them and catch Leonard in there somewhere at a much, much longer focal length. So I'm gonna switch back to the 70 to 200 now. I found it. I have found Leonard. Wow. Let me see. Okay, I can't put it in video mode. All right, there it is. So that right there is Leonard. And remember how I told you it looks like a fuzzy star? Well, that's the fuzzy star. Sorry, my this is for my phone, so it's like cracking out. So you can see my settings. This is just the back of the screen. I'm at 51,200 ISO, five seconds at four. That's only so that I can get my composition so that I can see, but that is Leonard. So now that I have it. So that was at 70 millimeters. Um, you know what, I think that's it, right? Right there, that's it. Wow, how cool is that? So I'm gonna prioritize shutter speed over ISO right now because again, I'm shooting at 200 millimeters. So I'm at a sixth of a second and I could, I could do it, I could change that and do a longer shutter speed and a, a lower ISO, um, but I would rather have that stability because that's what's gonna help the most in making sure that I get the shot. And I can just take a bunch of shots at a higher ISO and stack them and reduce the ISO. But if I have a shaky image, there's nothing I can do to fix that. So let me continue grabbing some shots here while we still have, uh, we have 613, so we have uh, just until 630. And then, I'm not gonna wrap it up here, let's go back into the studio and see what I got. Uh, and that'll definitely be after chai time, because chai time is the most important time after astro time because it's freezing. So, we have chai time, and I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Delicious hot tea, check. So the time-lapse died 
<laughs> well, you, you saw the time lapse uh, a little bit, but I had wanted it to run longer than that and get more to a day to night and have Venus continue setting. But uh, again, multitasking is like the downfall of my photographic career, my photography YouTube career. <laughs> so um, yeah, it died after about 60% of the way that, that I wanted, the length that I wanted it to go. Uh, but it still came out for a nice time lapse. It was still long enough to be considered a decent time lapse. Um, so I'm happy with that. But aside from the battery dying, uh, everything looked good. It processed well. I'm very happy with that. So I'm always happy when I get like a decent night time lapse going. So let's talk about some of these images. So, you know, I at first I thought that I would need my telescope or a tracker or something set up. And with a longer focal length, I, I would have, definitely you would, you would want that. Uh, even with the brightness, I would have been able to um, do much longer exposures with a longer lens. And then I could have even, you know, brought something like the 500 or this, you know, my 800, or I could have used my telescope. Telescope's probably a little overkill. I don't know. Telescope is like, uh, 1250 I think my telescope's not that it's not that big um, it's a travel telescope but for the little longer stuff like that having the piggyback on the telescope or um, or using the star tracker or something would have given me a lot different of a shot but in those cases I wouldn't have had any foreground at all and for this you know especially because we had the aligning of the planets that's kind of the look that I was going for. I definitely wanted um, just a more landscapey, more artistic looking image and not just the comet in the sky, uh, which I've done before. I did that with a closer shot, I think at 500 millimeters, 400 or 500 millimeters of Comet Neowise. And I thought that came out pretty well. Um, I was happy with that. But, you know, again, the photographer and me, I, I want to do something a little different. I wish I would have had a better foreground. Uh, I just didn't have time to get anywhere. And I, I'm lucky that um, I had this area that's close to me in a dark sky area, but I didn't have any time to get anywhere more interesting. <laughs> so I might try that again. Um, the comet's gonna be visible, I think for the rest of the year for another couple weeks, but uh, it's gonna be getting lower and lower every night. So it's going to be hard and the problem is the lower gets the horizon the fainter it's getting so that's going to so that's going to make it a little challenging to continue to photograph and also for me the weather like the clouds i had just amount just the right amount of the wrong clouds in the wrong place and the entire sky everywhere else not a, not a cloud anywhere to the east to the north to the west but right to the southwest I had just enough clouds to make it kind of a pain. That being said though, I did get a couple of shots. I got this shot with uh, the 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters. So, and I was just barely able to frame, you can see obviously Venus and Venus came out really nice. I think, uh, I think it rendered really nice with the, 7200 f4 and then with the little bit of clouds causing you know the, the lighting effect there that you're seeing so that one was pretty cool and then we can step back a little bit and we can see this image and by stepping back i mean stepping back with a focal length so this image is at 70 millimeters with the 7200 so uh, all the way backed out on that lens and it's pretty cool i didn't want to do too much i actually didn't edit these very much at all other than some uh, you know, preset, local adjustments, that kind of thing. And then we can back it out all the way to this image, which was shot on, which was shot on my uh, RF 16 millimeter 2.8. And again, the comet in the lower third here is really subtle, but I kind of like it as just an image overall. I wanted the comet, I wanted Leonard right there on that third so it kind of helps balance the image out. And then we've got Venus, right? Almost dead center. And then way up here, we have Jupiter 
and Saturn. So you can, Saturn is really hard to see, it is there, but Venus and Jupiter really stick out and that's the alignment of the planets, all with a foreground, albeit not the most interesting foreground, uh, and dark skies. I think overall this set of images are from 16 to 70 to 200 is, I'm kind of happy with it. That's about, I think, the best I could do definitely on short notice and um, with no tracker and no long lenses. But, you know, I've seen a lot of people, I've had a lot of people ask me with comments before and recently, you know, DMing me in comments and stuff asking like, hey, can we photograph the Comet Leonard without any special things? And yes, you can. This is the kind of stuff that you're probably going to expect though. And also I should mention that the three images here that I just showed you guys, uh, none of those were stacked or tracked. So those are all single images. And I think that is definitely a realistic goal for a lot of people out there who don't have a lot of stuff. So, you know, over the next couple of weeks, if you want to give this a try, just keep it in mind the worst thing that's going to hurt your photography and your like mental state of being is your attitude towards what's expected and what you can achieve. And again, like me, I, I knew that I wasn't going to get anything super amazing, amazing definition in the comment. And so I switched gears to let's make an overall nicer, wider, artistic looking image out of this. And that goes a long way for me personally to keeping my stress levels down and to not like having my hopes and dreams crushed when I see the results because I know what I'm not able to get. That being said though, for me personally, uh, any night under the stars like this out there, uh, photographing, astrophotography, like anything, I I'm always happy with because being outside at nighttime, in the cold i just it doesn't get any better than that for me personally so the fact that i got a time lapse and three decent images i mean nothing's portfolio worthy but again i don't care about that at all i care about you know this photographing the comet was an excuse for me to get out there and enjoy just being outside under the stars all right that's it i'm gonna wrap it up if you guys have any questions about anything that i did uh, concerning how I shot the comet or any of these images or whatever, leave those in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. Hit that like button for me if you enjoy this video because that's the best thing you can do for my channel and I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.